Let's get back to the comeback group. They really could have invested more in this opening sequence. They got everybody in these cheap purple get-ups. So we open with Destiny, I mean Storming, whatever, telling Melody, I ain't gonna DM you. Well, you gonna be off the show like Destiny then. <coughs> Stormy said, I see your disconnect. I also have unplugged. So Stormy's surprised they didn't speak at the reunion. Girl, she is your friend for the show. Act like you know. Oh, God. My real friends respect my boundaries and understand when I need alone time. Um, you don't ditch your real friends. You do this with fools on the show. The reason you want to say, oh, well, Kimmy respects my boundaries. No, Kimmy don't care about you. She know you come around for the show and let you be fake, phony, and erroneous. Now Stormy's needy. So now she's got to protect herself because someone secretly recorded her talking about Martell. Girl, you secretly recorded you and put it out for full free press and promotion and plotline. Mel, we know you. You don't do shit if it ain't for the show. Oh, and it's supposedly Stormy who did the secret recording. This is some Carlos King fakery. Oh, God. So we got Tisha's messy cousin coming. Letitia didn't realize Kiki was going to be here. Why are you so eternally uninformed? Kimmy, why are you asking Martell if he misses his moments with Mel? He had 8,000 times to turn that marriage around. He didn't want her. Child, he can want Mel back, but he ain't never going to get it, never going to get it. And he is so irritating. You could just tell the way she talked to him. That's my Versace. She don't want to be bothered no more. Kimmy, I, I wish you would leave alone. Mel getting real sick of him trying to play couple with her. So now is this big thing to walk Mel to the car. Honey, production is outside. Please stop playing. Oh, God. I'm a gentleman. Gentlemen don't cheat on their wives for years. After the commercial break, Kimmy says, I think Martel's always going to miss Mel. I think so, too. Because we know the shit with Sheree is for play play. Maurice is like, child, Mel ain't never coming back, so he needs to get over that. Oh, but now we're going to get Martell getting some counsel. I don't know. This couple ain't really helped you in a few seasons, but hey, if you got to use them. Martell wants to be married again. I don't know who'd be foolish enough to be with you. I mean, you and Sheree are filming in gym buddies, but that's about it. Y'all really going to ask him, is Sheree the one? The one thing keeping him on this show. Oh, God, but Martell didn't take her to court because she had too many babysitters. Meanwhile, across town, Mealy Mouth Tisha heads to Uptown. However, she gonna talk business with her cousin, Courtney. She asked Courtney to be a part of her brand spanking new brokerage, and Courtney's like, uh, do you have enough connections you brand spanking new? However, she said, I got to think about going to your brokerage, but how you going to get on the good foot with Cousin Kiki? So Kiki apparently messed her life up with, I don't know what they ain't said yet. It seems like drugs, but, and so she's jealous of Mealy Mouth Tisha and her big ugly. But Cousin Courtney trying to set her and Kiki up with an outing and Tisha's like, I don't want to be bothered with this heifer. But she going on to go. Oh, God, now Melody meeting with Nell, the heifer who was just counseling Martell. Y'all can't get different counselors. And again, they ain't helping either one of you. Melody said, I'm enjoying dating around. See, your counselor shouldn't be running telling that about the whole 20 babysitter in court bullshit. She says, so you begging me to take you back for running around dogging me to everybody that'll listen. Typical Martell. So she's like, well, why don't y'all get some babysitters that y'all approve of together? Girl, why are you on his side? She like, I ain't let Martell control me no more. Why Tisha and her cousin gonna meet at a kickboxing when they already about to throw hands? So Tisha tell her, I want a relationship with you, but I also don't want to be a fool because Mel did use you like a puppet. Kiki said, you and Marso put 20 on 10. I don't know, if you run around up after Mel, I'm a side with Mealy Mouth and her big ugly. So Tisha's like, this heifer ain't taking ownership. I don't know why I'm wasting my time. Because you have no other plot line. 
Tisha said, I don't want to get too irritated where I start telling your business. Crackhead business. Well, that was the shit, so I'm going to see you soon for some. Okay, let's check out the trailer for Bubkiss, which is a heightened version of Pete Davidson's life. Oh, Joe Pesci is playing his grandfather. Okay, this looks boring, but y'all might want to see it. I'm good. Let's check out the trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong. All it was was a flash of Kong's nostrils. That was it. That was it. Do we need Godzilla vs. Kong? Do we need more Godzilla? I think it's time for us to come up with a newer monster. Okay, now we got the trailer for The Idol, which is about a Britney Spears-esque girl, HBO original. Her name is Jocelyn, and she's living it up, but seems a little sad in the eye. So she falls in love with some guy that's giving me a sissy Lulu tea. Lots of drugs. So it's about her career and their relationship. That comes out June 4th. It's Lily Rose Depp, a Nepo baby. I wonder if the heifer can sing. I might peep at it. Might not. Oh my God, there's a Fast and Furious 10 trailer. What they doing this time? Oh, we're driving. We still got Tyrese. Vin Diesel's starting to age. Uh, Denise Huxtable's ex-husband is in this too. Oh, Rolling Bombs. I mean, it's it's another video game movie. So Denise Huxtable's ex-husband is going after Vin Diesel. We've got a raspy voice, Rosario Dawson. I mean, they threw everything but the kitchen sink and a decent script at this movie, but I'm sure somebody will enjoy it. It's good background noise at the holiday party. Okay, let's check out FUBAR on Netflix. Does Arnold Schwarzenegger still need to make movies? Have we had enough out of him? Because you keep playing the same role over and over again. Let somebody else be a superhero. So Arnold retires from being, you know, some secret spy. And now he's going to hang out with his daughter and win his wife back. But he got one more mission to go on before he leave. And it's saving his daughter. Because she's apparently a secret spy too. Arnold doing the same comedy slash hero shtick, child. I, I don't need to see it. Let's check out Jennifer Lopez and the Mother, also on Netflix. So the heifer have a baby, but apparently she kills seven FBI agents. So she got to disappear with the baby. So her daughter's been in hiding for years, and then, of course, they find her and kidnap her, and J-Lo got to save her baby. We got Omari Hardwick in this, too. It looks like good background music for a cookout, but I don't need to finish the trailer. Oh, God, is she singing? Oh, I hear some off-key singing. She might have done the title track for this. You know, she always thrusting out some new music. I'm a peep at it, though. I'm a peep at it. Now let's look at Evil Dead Rise. See, Carlos, I shouldn't have to do six trailer reviews because your show ain't give nothing. So we got a ghost cooking in the kitchen. Uh, the haunted house is an oddly shaped A house. Well, A frame. Oh, it ain't a ghost cooking in this kitchen. The sister's just possessed and she's wasting expensive eggs. So they find a book of the dead in the basement. These idiots open it. I'm sorry, that book looks so nasty. You could tell, mm -mm, leave that alone. Oh goodness, this thing came with a record too. So, child, we got ghosts possessing people. The ghosts is tearing the people up. It look good, but this is too bloody for me. I ain't gonna peep at it. I ain't peeping. I like suspense and jump scares. I don't need a bunch of gore. But I do like a tale of fraud. 